Good evening. Welcome to the city of Opelika. I'd like to call this meeting to order. Madam Clerk, roll call. Commissioner Bass. I'm here. Commissioner Taylor. Here. Vice Mayor Williams. Here. Mayor Pygett. I'm here. Um, Commissioner Bass, can you lead us in invocation? Sure. Father, first of all, we just want to say thank you. We say thank you, Lord God, for life, strength, and health. God, we just ask you tonight, God, that you would be with us, God, that you would breathe on us, Father God. We ask you, Lord God, that you would help us, oh God, to think clearly, Lord God, and to make just decisions, Father God, that we would benefit as a city, Lord God, and as a people, God. We ask you that you would be with us in Jesus' name. Amen. Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance. All right, today we have quite a bit in terms of awards, proclamations, and acknowledgments. Um, first, we're going to have the swearing in of our interim. Chief of Police for the City of Opelika, uh, is Chief Dennis Jackson. You want to join me at the mic? Step back just a little bit from Good afternoon. <clears throat> Evening. Before we begin, I would like to read the biography of our interim chief of police, Chief Dennis Jackson II. Chief Dennis Jackson II was born in Miami Dade County and raised in Miami Gardens, just one block outside of the city of Opelika. Jackson was educated at the historic Bethune-Cookman Bethune University where he graduated with a bachelor's degree of science in, math, uh, in management. He continued his education in theological studies at Trinity International University where he earned a master of arts degree. Chief Dennis Jackson II is currently a PhD candidate at Nova Southeastern University in criminal justice with an emphasis in juvenile justice. In 1993, he started a law enforcement career with the city of Miami Police Department. In 1998, Chief Dennis Jackson II became a seasoned police detective where he investigated thousands of cases in the following areas, economic crimes, missing persons, burglary unit, and information technology. While working for the city of Miami, Chief Jackson served in various positions and attended countless of professional trainings and enrichment programs to include school resource officer, sergeant of patrol, court liaison, and evidence management. In 2013, Jackson served as the major of community relations at the Miami Police Department, one of the largest law enforcement agencies in the state of Florida. Chief Jackson expressed his dedication to working with community and regional stakeholders to build alliances, to seek solutions in an environment of communications and collaboration. While serving as major, Chief Jackson led a union of 146 sworn members and seven civilian staff members. He developed a team and guided the public information office overseeing the following programs. The Miami Police Athletic League, Do the Right Thing, and Crime Against Elderly. 
After years of determination and work, Chief Jackson took his oath as Assistant Chief of Police for the Miami Police Department. He served as Assistant Chief of Police of, of the Administration Division, managed a budget of $261 million, which supported a department of 1,500 sworn and civilian staff members. He also served as the Assistant Chief of Police of the Field Operations Division, which is the largest division of the police department. Chief Jackson was instrumental in the agency's benchmarks, seeking to promote community problem solving and the use of uh, relational policing. He became a catalyst for change in organizational cultures and service delivery models that invest in, into the sanctity of life. Chief Dennis Jackson II has been a member of the Miami-Dade County Association of Chiefs, the Fraternity Order of uh, Police, the Police Executive Research Forum, and former president of the Miami Community Benevolent Association. Chief Jackson II resides in South Florida with his wife, Tanya, and three children, Princess Malik and Dennis III. Now for time for your oath. Raise your right hand. Repeat after me. I, I say your name. Dennis M. Jackson II. Do hereby solemnly swear. Do hereby solemnly swear. That I will support the Constitution. That I will support the Constitution. And I will obey the laws of the United States and. And I will obey the laws of the United States and. The state of Florida. The state of Florida. And that I will in all respects. And that I will in all respects. Observe the provisions of the charter. Observe the provisions of the charter. And the ordinances of the city of Opelika. And the ordinances of the city of Opelika. And I will fulfillly discharge the duties. And I will fitly discharge the duties. Of the interim chief of police. Of the interim chief of police. For the, the city of Opelika Police Department. For the city of Opelika Police Department. So help you God. So help me God. Congratulations. Thank you. Chief Jackson, if you want to come up, if you want to come up and say a couple words. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Manager, uh, Commission, Mayor, for this opportunity to serve uh, here in the city of Opelika. I'm excited about this opportunity and certainly want to th thank all of the uh, men and women who are here, uh, some from the Miami Police Department that I've had the pleasure of working with. Uh, of course, my wife, Tanya, my children, Princess, Malik and Dennis, and certainly I want to thank uh, my pastor, the Reverend Richard P. Dunn, and all of the Reverend clergy who are here today. And I'm going to ask the clergy to stand up uh, and let me recognize you that are here. Thank you so much. And all of the men and women of the Miami Police Department who are here, put your hands up and stand up and let me recognize you. Thank you so much for being here. And I also wanna thank my staff, Deputy Chief Jenkins and Captain uh, Rogers, who's here with me today. And so I'm excited. I wanna give you a number, a number that you could call if you need help if you need assistance, and I'm gonna be brief. Uh, and that number is 786-486-3659. And someone may be wondering what number is that? That's my cell phone number. I work for you. I work for the residents of the city of Opelika and together we're going to do great things. Once again, thanks for the opportunity. God bless you. And just as a matter of decorum, gentlemen, um, I know there's a lot of ladies looking to uh, sit down. Uh, if you don't, if you don't mind, if you can kindly give up your seats for any lady that's standard, uh, that would be greatly and wholeheartedly appreciated. Thank you.
All right, so first of all, it is beautiful to see so many of those in here in this room. We have just appointed another official here in the city of Opalaka, and it takes a village to ensure that we do what we need to do for the community. And I'm glad to see that we have a village here in this room um, that is care for the city of Opalaka and will hold us accountable to do what we need to do here in this city. So I want to thank each and every one of you. Um, we also have, uh-oh, it went off. There is, yeah, I got it. Um, We have a car that is parked in front of a residence driveway. It is six, Z, license plate number 60AGWK. Again, that's 608GWK, South Broward Alumni uh, Tag. <laughs> oh, my. Oh, was that? Oh, my, <laughs> I apologize about that. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm bad. All right. Also, uh, for, for those that may not know, y'all will see there's a lot of red in the room tonight. Uh, <laughs> and if you notice, we do have a vice mayor that has some red on too. <laughs> she is a member of one of the Divine Nine, uh, the Delta Sigma, Theta Sorority Incorporated. And today we're uh, inaugurating our first Delta Day. So Vice Mayor, you wanna do the honor? Thank you, Mayor. Do y'all see how clean Commissioner John Taylor is in his red suit? I told him, I said, I don't know. You're looking a little capperish right now. <laughs> he said he did it for me. He did it for us. Um, I am, um, I keep saying my heart is full, my heart is warm, but knowing that I joined, pledged, crossed the burning sands of the best, and I know we got a few others, sorority in the world, Delta Sigma Theta Sorority Incorporated, and everyone that knows me here on this dais knows that I am a loud, proud member, um, not just Miami alumni, Miami alumni in the house, Dade County alumni in the house, and South Broward, who just got told in the house. Just playing as a joke. I kid. Delta days. So you may ask yourself, what are Delta days? Before I became vice mayor or a commissioner of the great city of Opelika, I was the social action chair of Miami alumni chapter. And one of the things that we did as a sorority is we call them Delta days. We had Delta days in the county, Delta days at the school board, Delta days in Tallahassee where we took over the uh, city of Tallahassee in all of our glorious red. And we also had many state representatives and legislators that were also sorors. And so Delta days have always been one of those many acts of public service that we as Deltas have done. A lot of people have asked me, what are Delta days? What are Delta days? 
Well, what this means is we, we stampede on a city or school board like the like Miami um, Day County Public Schools, uh, um, uh, my city of Miami. Uh, I think our our um, city attorney actually orchestrates Delta Days in Broward. Yes, that's her baby in Broward. So, and what we do is to show the community that we support the community, that we are here to push any legislation that works for Delta. And so that legislation can, it, it's not just, it just doesn't encompass Opelika, but it all, it touches us all in every community. Because what we do when one pothole is filled in Alabama, and you may go see your grandmama in Alabama, then that actually works for all of us. So I, Veronica Williams, who is also the vice principal of the Miami Northwestern Senior High School and vice mayor, welcome my sorors to the inaugural Delta Days in the great city of Opalaka. At this time, I'm going to ask my school board member, Dr. Dorothy bendross Minigal, to come up and bring greetings. I called him Mr. Mayor before he knew he was gonna be Mr. Mayor. And, I, and I'm not letting go. Uh-oh. <laughs> so, good evening, everyone. I bring you greetings from over 400,000 children in Dade County Public Schools. And of course, nine school board members who are the bosses of all that we survey in Dade County Public Schools. You might have an idea that uh, someone else is the boss, but that's not true. Be very careful. Recognize that you have nine school board members and we run the school system. Oh, that's what they think. Well, when it comes down to us protecting our children, our teachers, our custodians, everyone who sets foot uh, in our schools, we look out for them. So as um, Mr. Mayor and um, Ms. Vice Mayor, who is now the Vice Principal? Ooh, she's stepping up, she's Vice Principal of Miami Northwestern. We don't have to sing the song, do we? <laughs> Someone said, yeah, we know the words, we know the words. But to all of you, thank you for coming out. Please understand that this is the inaugural of Delta. It's really a day, not days in Tallahassee when I was there, we had days. So we might move up to days, but uh, come next year, all goes well and God, uh, God is willing. We will be doing Delta days at the school board, which will be approximately 10 years. And you've got to make it look good. When I was in Tallahassee, all of the legislators would ask, when are those pretty ladies in red going to come up? So we're hoping that um, we can move forward to going back to Tallahassee. Uh, hopefully that uh, this um, virus will uh, allow us to do that. But uh, thank you for coming. And I know you feel the love in the great city of Opalaka. God bless you. See you on the journey.
and now so that we can move the program along. I would like to call up two hardworking, undeniable, unbelievable, amazing Deltas, the president, the chapter president of the Miami alumni chapter and the Dade County chapter, Miss Stephanie Steele Nelson, my soror, and soror Tony Gilliam Harris. And let me tell you, it's got to be a feat to be able to be chapter presidents of over, I don't know, hundreds of women here in Miami. So I would like to present, and also, I'm so sorry, I must uh, bring up my line sister, Regina Sandlin, who this was her brainchild to come here to start this in Opalaka, as well as her co-chair, Joyce Postel. So we would like to present proclamations to both chapters. Come on up, ladies, come on. So I won't read all of it. Whereas the ladies of the Miami alumni chapter of Delta Sigma Theta Incorporated served the South Florida community for over 80 years since June 9th, 1941. And whereas the Miami alumni chapter has made a monumental impact on South Florida community by spearheading and participating in notable charitable efforts in the community, through organizations of our five point programmatic thrust, which are economic development, educational development, international awareness involvement, physical and mental health, and political awareness involvement. Whereas the Miami alumni chapter is a chapter of movement and action with the goal of making a solid impact on the community so that when others look back in history, we made our mark. Now, therefore, I, Vice Mayor Veronica J. Williams, along with the citizens of the great city of Opelika and my colleagues, Mayor Matthew Pigott, Commissioner Shirlene Bass, Chris Davis, John Taylor in his nice red, do hereby proclaim Wednesday, October 27th, 2021 as Delta Days here in the great city of Opelika. Can the Deltas of Miami alumni chapter please stand? And now the Deltas of Dade County Alumni Chapter, please stand. It's making y'all all stand at the same time. <laughs> Proclamation, whereas the Miami-Dade Alumni Chapter of Delta Sigma Theta Sorority Incorporated was chartered January 10th, 1981 at the Belafonte Tocosi Center, and whereas the Miami-Dade Chapter has clearly distinguished itself as a public service organization. Also, an extensive array of public service initiatives through their, our, five-point programmatic thrust, thrust. Whereas locally, we, they, have hosted Delta Days in Miami-Dade County, as well as Delta Days in Miami-Dade County School Board. Organized resume writing workshops, sickle cell drives, World AIDS Day events, Alzheimer's community symposiums, as well as judicial, legislative, and political forums. Whereas the Miami-Dade County Alumni Chapter has led by example and has been at the forefront of community service in Miami-Dade County since their inception, celebrating 40 years of sisterhood, scholarship, and what source? Service. Service. Now, therefore, I, Vice Mayor Veronica J. Williams, along with the citizens of Great City of Opelika and my colleagues do hereby proclaim Wednesday, October 27th as Delta Days in the Great City of Opelika.
Soros, please. All Soros, both chapters. We would like to invite all the Deltas to come up and take a group photo.
I heard that ring, but I ain't know who that. I don't ever want to miss a call from my family because you never know my dad. I'm like, so you could have answered it. My daughter. My daughter. Child. <laughs> All right, we want to thank everyone for coming and joining us today. I believe we still have refreshments outside for those who didn't want anything. Good evening again. I am Stephanie Steele Nelson, the president of the Miami Alumni Chapter. And to the mayor, Matthew Paget, our vice mayor, Veronica Williams, commissioners of this great city, school board members, and our school board member, um, Dr. Benjoss Mendengal, Representative Bush, all political leaders in your respective places, and everyone here tonight. On behalf of the Miami Alumni Chapter of Delta Sigma Theta Sorority Incorporated and over 360 college educated women, I am here to bring you greetings tonight. Delta Sigma Theta Sorority Incorporated is an organization of college educated women committed to the public, to committed to public service and to the community. We are here to serve this community we are here to partner with our sister Veronica Williams in this great city. And to everyone else here tonight, Miami Alumni Chapter, as you heard, have been providing public service to the Miami-Dade County community for over 80 years. We are a chapter for all ages. And when I say all ages, I'm not just talking about the ladies of Delta Sigma Theta. I am talking about our mentoring groups, we have mentoring groups for kindergarten through 12th grade. 
So if you have a young lady that needs to be mentored, the women of Miami alumni chapter are here for you. We also have events for adults. We have political forms, physical and mental health forms, as well as technology educational forms to help the adults. We are a sisterhood committed to scholarship and service. Tonight's event is just one way that we offer service to this community under our political awareness and involvement thrust. Again, thanks for letting us join you tonight at your political table. We are here for you in this great city of Opelaka, and we look forward to partnering with you in the future. So again, on behalf of that Mac on behalf of the magnificent women of the Miami Alumni Chapter, I truly thank you for your time. So, and before I take my seat, I must say to our very own sorority sister, your vice mayor, Veronica Williams, we love you and will always be here to support you. Thank you and have a great rest of your evening. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen of the beautiful city of Opelaka, Florida. My name is Tony Gilliam Harrison, and I have the honor and privilege of serving as the 15th president of Dade County Alumni Chapter of Delta Sigma Theta Sorority Incorporated, where there are over 250 members strong throughout the county of Miami-Dade. Since the inception of Delta Sigma Theta Sorority Incorporated, we have distinguished ourselves as a public service organization that has led the way and contributed to each and every community where we reside. With that being said, it is absolutely our pleasure to be here this evening at the Delta Days in the city of Opelaka. Social action, that is what Deltas do. We hold, de de we hold Delta Days throughout the United States to increase our members' involvement in national, state, and local public policies and the making of public policies. This is the first year that we have the absolutely honor and privilege to do this in the wonderful city of Opelaka and participate in your commission's meeting and listen to what the concerns are of your constituents. I know that for many years, the city of Opelaka has been plagued with issues such as high crime, damaged roads, drainage issues, but under the leadership of your mayor, Mr. Matthew Pidget, and the vice mayor, there has been an extensive improvement in the city of Opelaka. The city of Opelaka has become sustainable, making in, 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 infrastructure improvements, working with the Miami-Dade County to improve its residents' water bill, resurfacing roads, tackling the needs of, of flooding that's impacting the water, sewage, and flourish area. You did this all despite of losing two commissioners in the last five years. I am encouraged to continue to work with you as you work with your local, state, and federal governments to bring the necessary resources to the city for a long-term improvement here in Opelaka. We will continue to stay updated on your projects and improvement throughout the city. Again, thank you, thank you, thank you for allowing us to have just a little moment in your meeting to watch the progress that you all are absolutely making in Opelaka. On behalf of the city of Opelaka and all of our residents, I want to thank each and every one of you for joining us, for the Deltas, for being here today. This is what it means when we talk about building a community. I want to thank you for taking the time to come here, uh, continue to be a part of this. For those that are watching that may have just heard about Deltas, look around. These are some of the most powerful women in South Florida. You have directors, you have nonprofit leaders, you have uh, elected officials, you have attorneys, amazing women and individuals that serve as role models for our community and continue to push us and make us a better community here in Miami. So I wanna thank you for joining us. I wanna thank Vice Mayor for taking the time to make sure that the Deltas have a day here in the city of Opelaka. Thank you. All right, now let's move on to the business of the people. All right. Do I have any pulls, deletions, or deferrals? Uh, Mr. Mayor. Well, Commissioner Taylor. I want to pull item two. 
All right. Any others? All right. Do I have a motion to approve the consent agenda? Move it. Moved by Vice Mayor Williams. Second. Second by Commissioner Taylor. Madam Clerk. Commissioner Taylor. Yes. Vice Mayor Williams. Yes. Commissioner Baz. Yes. Mayor Pygett. Yes. Motion passes 5-0. I'm, I'm sorry, 4-0. All right, we have two uh, add-on items. Mm -hmm. um, I'm gonna read it into the record. Madam Attorney. Uh, the clerk should read it into the oh, record. Oh, Madam, I'm sorry, Madam Clerk. Yes, Mr. Mayor, we have a request to amend the agenda as follows. Nice. Speaking to the mic. These items would be included under new items. 14-1, a resolution of the City Commission of the City of Oplaka, Florida, authorizing the city manager to piggyback the state of Florida contract with Toshiba America Business Solutions, Inc. for qualified professional services to provide 10 copier machines for use, for use within the city, authorizing the city manager to enter into an agreement for same for an amount not to exceed $19,017 in a form acceptable to the city attorney, terminating all active contracts and leases with Toshiba America Business Solutions, Inc., providing for incorporation of recitals, providing for an effective date. This is sponsored by the city manager. All right. Mr. Manager, could you state the emergency uh, nature for this item? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, the reason item is being added is due to the fiscal well-being of the city. In that, um, if this item is not added today, uh, due to um, a financial um, mishap on Toshiba itself, um, they're requesting the city to renew the contract or uh, pay a uh, specific, specified blue payment, um, which will be explained further uh, upon the agenda item being presented. All right, do I have a motion to add item 14-1 to the agenda? Moved by Commissioner Taylor. Second. Second by Commissioner Bass. Madam Clerk, roll call. Commissioner Taylor. Yes. Vice Mayor Williams. Yes. Commissioner Babb. Yes. Mayor Pygett. Yes. Motion passes 4-0. Right. Next item. This item would be included as 14-2, a resolution of the City Commission of the City of Opelika, Florida, authorizing the city manager to negotiate and execute an agreement with City National Bank of Florida to provide professional banking services to the city of Opelika for the opening of an interest bearing checking account to deposit the allocation of coronavirus state and local fiscal recovery funds established under the American Rescue Plan Act, ARPA, providing for incorporation of recitals, providing for an effective date. This is sponsored by the city manager. Mr. Manager, could you state the emergency nature of this item? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. The emergency nature, again, is due to fiscal well-being in the city. Uh, based on discussions with the commission um, in regards to the investment of the uh, little under $8 million ARPA funding, it was in being the city's best interest to open up a interest-bearing account uh, to start incurring interest immediately on these funds. Do I have a motion to add this to the agenda? Move it. Moved by Commissioner Taylor. Second. Second by Vice Mayor Williams. Madam Clerk, roll call. Vice Mayor Williams. Yes. Commissioner Baz. Yes. Commissioner Taylor. Yes. Mayor Pygett. Yes. Motion passes 4-0. Do I have a motion to approve the agenda? Move, Move it. it. Moved by Commissioner Taylor. Second. Second by Commissioner Baz. Madam Clerk, roll call. Commissioner Baz. Yes. Commissioner Taylor. Yes. Vice Mayor Williams. Yes. Mayor Pygett. Yes. Motion passes 4-0. So I have a motion to approve the con continued second budget hearing minutes of September 29th, 2021. Move it. Moved by Commissioner Taylor. Second. Second by Vice Mayor Williams. Madam Clerk, roll call. Commissioner Taylor. Yes. Vice Mayor Williams. Yes. Commissioner Baz. Yes. Mayor Pygett. Yes. Motion passes 4-0. Right. Do we have a report from District 1 or District 2? All right. Do you have any public presentations? No, Mr. Mayor. All right. 
Right, moving on to citizens forum, Madam Clerk, could you go over the protocols of citizens forum? Yes, good evening. City of Opelika Commission meetings are held in person at Shibandi Village Auditorium, 215 Purvis Avenue, Opelika, Florida. Members of the public wishing to address the commission may do so in person or virtually. Those persons wishing to participate virtually should register prior to the scheduled meeting time on the city's website at www.opalakafl.gov. When speaking before the commission, please make sure to give your full name and address for the record. There is a three minute time limit for public comments. Please adhere to the decorum policy, which is part of the commission meeting agenda. City commission meetings are aired through live stream at www.youtube.com slash user slash city of Opalaka. And Mr. Mayor, we do have one individual online that has registered, um, Mr. Jim Casey. Okay, citizens forum is open. Is Mr. Casey online? All right. Mr. Casey, um, you should be allowed to speak. Um, feel free to unmute your mic um, and join us in Citizens Forum. Uh, good evening, uh, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, good evening, Mayor uh, Pigott and members of the City Commission. My name is Jim Casey of the Law Offices of Slesnick and Casey, Coral Gables, Florida, here on behalf of the South Florida PBA and Captain Sergio Perez. I apologize for not appearing in person, but circumstances have prevented me from being there with you all, especially on Delta days. Our purpose here tonight is to try and set the record straight regarding certain allegations brought forward by persons appearing before the commission. Allegations have been made by civilians alleging various levels or issues of alleged misconduct against Captain Perez, issues which I believe uh, the persons making those allegations would have little personal knowledge. And regarding the true facts and circumstances of those rumors, innuendo, and untruths, all the allegations that I've been made aware of have been thoroughly litigated and or resolved uh, in my client's favor. The young lady who appeared before you two weeks ago showed a letter to the commission written by an attorney on behalf of Captain Perez which she said made her afraid, threatened and intimidated. But the, this letter is a typical letter uh, authorized by Florida statutes uh, regarding a cease and desist uh, pursuant to that Florida statute, which places people on notice that they have made unsubstantiated allegations, spurious accusations, and what the appropriate manner is to retract those allegations. These are accepted legal practices and processes for placing people on notice in order for them to make note of those allegations that are alleged to be defamatory and uh, to take such steps to cease and desist and to retract those in a public forum similar to the one in which they were made. This is a right and process open to any Floridian uh, who has been or believes they have been defamed in a public forum. There are many processes in, the, in this country, this state, this county and this city to address grievances uh, or issues or information that residents or business owners may have against public servants. Uh, the previous speakers against our client have a first amendment right to say anything they wish to say uh, in private or in public but it's not an unfettered or absolute right. They may not, for example, yell fire in a crowded venue or specifically foment insurrection and rebellion and expect to not suffer consequences. Also a person may make whatever statements they wish to make in private or in public about another person. But if those statements are false about the person defamed made to a third party, such as this commission, and that that falsity of the statement caused injury to the plaintiff, then that person may have to suffer the legal consequences. That is the appropriate system for redress of any grievances. There are also other ways to redress grievances. Uh, obviously you can file a complaint with the internal affairs about a police officer. You can file against any public or police official with the state attorney's office, the Office of the Inspector General, the Commission on Ethics and Public Trust, 
or the State Commission on Ethics, and, and the list goes on. Thank you, Mr. The Casey. We appreciate okay. the time. Your time is up. Thank you. May I just uh, finish up? Uh, you can wrap up very quickly. Thank you. Uh, this commission in its wisdom has adopted a decorum policy for citizens addressing the commission, which prohibits defamation in terms of slander. Any person making impertinent or slanderous remarks who becomes boisterous or who becomes boisterous while addressing shall be barred from further audience before the commission. Thank you for your attention and I appreciate the opportunity. Citizens forum is open for those in the audience. Thank you. Oh, you gotta cut on your mic. You got me, How you doing? Okay. Okay, can you hear me now? Kerry Tyre, Chief of the Great City of Opelika, Cheryl Case in 781 Curtis Drive. I came before you tonight just to say, oh, good evening. I like speaking to everybody. Hello. I just came in front of you tonight to say that I welcome Chief Dennis Jackson II. I know him and uh, just spoke with him outside. And I just wanna say that I think this is a good move for our city. And I pray that we can work with him and I'm sure we can, I know we can. We'll work with him and do the positive things that we need to make this city move forward. I feel hopeful for the police department with this move. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Good evening. Uh, good evening, Mayor and Commissioners. Brian Dennis, address 2140 York Street. Let me begin by apologizing to each and every one of you um, for my behavior last week, uh, a couple of weeks ago. And whatever was going on in here and being and getting emotional about what was going on, I really and sincerely apologize to each and every one of you and to the citizens of the city regardless of the simple fact of what has been going on lately in the city. The second thing is, uh, Mr. Manager, each and every one of you, i worked with the chief of police in the city of Miami for years, started way back in 1997 with my tenure as the president of Brothers of the Same Man doing the Miami-Dade County State Attorney's Office, Clean Street, Straight Street, Weed and Seed, um, that watched that place, that watched that particular program gutted out, Liberty City, over town and the majority of the black community at that time before Miami Gardens was Miami Gardens. There's no need to hold the interim tag on it. That's the best chief that this city could possibly find. In order to move up within the city of Miami, I worked in the city of Miami for several years with that program. In order to become an assistant chief, you have to know what you are doing. I watched Chief Jackson come from stripes, to I mean, from no stripes, to stripes to the collar. And in the model city over the North District Command Center, which he had on 62nd Street, model city, that was a problem. And he handled that problem well. Commissioner Taylor, you have my deepest sympathies to your family. Uh, I've been there uh, as far as losing a child. And I just recently, a few months back, had to officiate my own nephew's funeral. If there's anything, anything that I could do to help you and your family, please do not hesitate. So it, with that being said, I hope you all have a blessed evening, a blessed night, and I sincerely apologize to each and every one. Good evening, Audrey Dominguez, 1147 Jan Avenue. First, I would like to thank Commissioner Taylor and his team for bringing Conga Loca to the city of Opalaca. It was a great event, good food and great music. Now we have to start planning for next year, okay? <laughs> to make it bigger and better, okay? Um, I was very sad and upset to hear about the chief of police leaving. Um, he had his reasons and I respect his decisions. We have to unite as a city and not give up on the police department. The city manager now has to pl has placed um, the new chief, interim chief Dennis Jackson, which I met, and I'm I hope that he does a great job in this new position. Regarding item number two on the agenda, 
It states on page 127, when revenues are down in periods of economic hardship, municipalities need flexibility to tighten spending whenever such measures will be most efficient, whether those tightening measures affect law enforcement or parks and recreation. This lawsuit is not going to benefit the residents of Opalaca because if you cut uh, police budget, we will not have public safety. And if you cut the funding from parks and recreation, it's going to hurt the seniors program. So I ask you, any one of you that might be considering running for uh, elections next year to consider not approving this item because it would seriously hurt you. I really believe that this lawsuit is um, only going to benefit the attorneys that, are, that want a piece of the pie. It's not really gonna benefit the city of Opalaca. Good evening, Mr. Mayor, Vice Mayor, and Commission and citizens. My name is Dottie Johnson. I reside at 13724 Northwest 22nd Place. I have a couple of items. First of all, I would like to thank the city manager through the commission for the drainage being clean. I've been in my house since 1978, and I have never, when I say never, that's all big E. N-E-V-E-R, never seen the drainage clean. So I'm very appreciative to see that being done. I'm also appreciative to see that the city did take the initiative to observe breast cancer awareness, but I'm not pleased with what I've seen. The vehicle was really a part of the previous administration and now it's running and everything. But if you don't have enough money to put those pink badges on every police officer, then I don't think it's fair to put it on two or three. And I would take financially responsibility if you don't have it in your budget to make sure that it's done next year. But so far, so good. I like to strongly suggest that you have a state of Florida service provider that cleans up State Road 9. I've given the name, I've given the phone number. When I was a commissioner, I used to go around and look and see when Michelle came through. I have never seen anyone cut lawn with the paper there and you line the paper. Who does the quality control check in the city? That should be unacceptable, truly unacceptable. To move on, I think before you can really enforce code enforcement, you guys got to look at your own property, your water stations. It looks like a dump. If you need a model house to look at, you know where I live. My husband cut the line three times a week, but he knows the image that we want to project to our neighbors. The appointing officials, when I was a commissioner, all three of the appointees got evaluated until one, I had to have a one-on-one. -on -one. And after I had the one-on-one, -on -one, they resigned. Input from the citizens. I've asked you all over and over to look at on your agenda when it's down to input of the citizens. Because after the citizen come up and talk and you all have the dialogue, what are we talking about? I have never, ever heard you all bring up anything when you have in your robust dialogue what the citizens brought up. So you need to look at that. You need to have your dialogue and the citizens need to have input, not before. And that was changed after the previous administration. I asked myself why. I leave you with this. May God bless you on your decisions and have a blessed day. Thank you. Someone left their pad up here. Good evening, Janie Russell, 1210 Perry Street. Uh, first, I would like to say uh, great job seeing all the sea of red all tonight. I know the vice mayor is like ecstatic, but uh, to the commission, 
to um, Commissioner Taylor. You have our condolences for, to your family. And I just want to say it was a great job that the festival that we had, I can't even hardly say the name, Congo Loco. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever it was, it was a job well done. It, I really enjoyed it. It was hot, but we stayed out there most of the day, and it was good from start to finish. Uh, the next time, I would like to see you all have a little bit more for the children to enjoy, but um, uh, you had something for every aspect, for the older people, for the younger people, then you had some for the younger, but just not the children but it was really good. Another issue I would like to, uh, I see that they're doing the sidewalks. I can't wait till you get to my street, but can we please have the people that's doing the sidewalks, can they put some more signage when you're coming up to where they're going to be working? We don't know that the street is gonna be closed off until you get right there. So that would really help us, but I'm looking forward to um, two blocks, y'all, two blocks away, and I'm holding my breath, you know, thank God I got it on this side of heaven, okay, so I'm waiting on sidewalks, thank you, have a good evening. Welcome to the new chief. <laughs> Good evening, everybody. My name is Samar. I'm a resident of Opalaka, 720 Sharar Avenue. Um, I'm here on, my, on behalf of my father who can't be here today, but we were interested in knowing if the city of Opalaka offers any assistance or grants for the preservation of historic homes. One of our properties is a historic home. And uh, unfortunately, um, we're unable to keep up with it. So we've been told that if we don't, paint it anytime soon will be cited for it. And um, I did tell the, uh, I forgot his name, honestly, who I spoke with over the phone at the city of Opalaka, but I told him, I don't know if right now is the best time to be giving citations when we are in the middle of a pandemic. And uh, a lot of people don't have jobs right now. And it's very difficult also to find uh, reliable contractors um, who not only do a good job, but don't just steal your money and run away. So if the city of Opalaka does offer anything for the preservation of historic homes, of historic homes, we would like to know. And also uh, just out of curiosity, I've been seeing like uh, uh, tall blue things being installed around the city of Opalaka. I'm not sure what that is. One of them was installed right outside of my aunt's home. And till this day, we have no idea what that is. Thank you. Sentence form is open. Sentence form is closed. Any response from my colleagues? Mayor Paget. Commissioner Bass. Um, I'm sitting here and I am just, I'm happy. Let's just put it that way because there is a God and I'm gonna leave it as that, there is a God. There is a God. Commissioner Taylor. Mr. Mayor, uh, to the manager, in regards to, well, first off, I wanna say um, happy anniversary to Commissioner Johnson. I think she celebrated 46 years today, 48, 48 years today. So in regards to her question about State Road 9, and we, they cut that, we don't cut that. They cut that, right? To the mayor. Mr. Manager. So it's according to what portion of State Road 9? That's what I was gonna ask about the that, half we do and half or something like that. So it's according to what portion of State Road 9 we're talking about. And I know we're in the process of having discussions with our public works department. Cause at one time the city took um, responsibility for certain sections of State Road 9 to maintain uh, the roadway from uh, the Department of Transportation. 
And I know uh, that the city at this point uh, does not have the uh, financial wherewithal where to continue to do that. Uh, so I know we're in the middle of having discussions to, uh, with the Department of Transportation to discuss that further. Uh, if Mr. Mayor, allow me, Mr. Austin, can talk about it very briefly within 30 seconds, if that's okay. Mr. Austin. Aria Austin, Public Works Director. Uh, the state currently maintains the flat portions of the roadway, the motor grass, and we take care of the, the trees and shrubbery on the roadway. So at this point, uh, through the mayor, it's more of a shared responsibility, which makes it a little bit complicated because we deal with part and they deal with part. And so we are looking at either uh, dealing with it all or potentially uh, given that response, asking or requesting um, the state to take all of the responsibility back. But we're I know we're currently in deliberations in regards to that. And also, I know um, if the state does so decide to take that back, uh, they will want us to bring it into a certain level of shape uh, where when they take it over, uh, that is easily maintained moving forward. And the other things were, can we reach out to our citizens in regards to um, the signage for the sidewalks that Ms. Russell asked about and also um, that Shamar talked about the grants for historical housing and if we don't provide that in our city, because I know we don't, but can we help push them into the right direction of an agency outside of Opelika that can help them? Through the mayor. She also asked about some blue objects that are being- Through the mayor. As far as historical housing is concerned, uh, that falls under Mr. Gay's wheelhouse, and I will um, ensure that there are any opportunities out there that we make sure that we appropriately put that out to residents. I know there are some historical homes that the city has uh, been appropriately fining uh, due to lack of maintaining the property, and I know Mr. Gay are aware, we're aware of those homes, um, so we're looking into those. And as far as the blue water devices, the blue devices being installed in front of homes, those are water water quality testing stations that are being placed in front of those uh, pieces of property. Uh, they allow us to perform testing without entering people's private homes. Okay, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Anyone else? Um, other thing that was, I don't think was addressed as these blue containers. Could you speak on what those are, Mr. Mr. Manager? Mr. Mayor, I just spoke on that. The blue, blue, oh. oh, I'm sorry. Okay, I missed that. No, one. my okay. apologies. And I, and I know I'm sometimes I have a problem speaking up. The blue containers are water quality testing stations that I put in front of homes. And what that does is that allows us to test water quality of that uh, specific area of property without us uh, requesting to go into individuals' homes and intrude in their private space. Thank you. All right. Anything else? All right. Thank you very much, everyone, for coming up um, and utilizing Citizens Forum to address us and make your thoughts known for what we need to do in the city. Thank you very much. All right. Moving on to our action items. Um, 13 2. A resolution of the City Commission of the City of Opalaka, Florida, authorizing the Public Rights Project, a project of the Tide Center community justice project and Southern Poverty Law Center to file a lawsuit on behalf of the city of Opelika, Florida that facially challenges section one of CS HB 1 2021, providing for adoption of representations, providing for an effective date. This is sponsored by Mayor Pygott and Vice Mayor Williams. Uh, motion. Move it. Move by Vice Mayor Williams. Second for discussion. Second by Commissioner Teller. I'll start off with the discussion on this. Um, last year during the legislative session, um, there was a, a policy file or legislation filed in the state legislature of HB1, many deem it as the anti-rioting bill um, that basically gives um, police discretion to uh, call three or more people a riot and elevates the level of charges that people can participate. Um, some see this as a time in which protests, uh, peaceful protests can be regarded as a riot. 
Um, it also gives others the ability to, um, if they're in their vehicle, if they're blocking streets, they feel threatened, um, to take matters in their own hands and even harm those engaged. Um, and a few other things, but one end also in particular is the restriction of, of our municipalities' ability to basically make decisions based upon our budget. Um, we have a lot of things going on at a municipality and at cities all across the state um, that in which sometimes some budgets need to go up, some budgets needs to go down, some, some years a budget gets extra funding, some years it does not. Um, and what this bill does is that at any no point in time, um, if there is ever an issue in which our um, police budget cannot be reduced in any way, and if there are the citizens that file a, a complaint or state attorney, anyone that can investigate and overrule the, our, our ability as a municipality to make those decisions. Um, so we're joining with other municipalities throughout the state in order to um, challenge that law and make sure it is legal uh, within um, the state of Florida. And um, that is what we are doing with this uh, item. So with that, um, is there any other um, vice mayor you wanna share? Yes, Mr. Mayor. Um, I know that there is um, talk that um, says that we shouldn't move forward due to the fact that we are in financial um, financial crisis. However, we must also understand that municipalities need full control of their budget so that we can properly function. We know that budgets in a municipality varies year to year, day to day. I would also like to just give an example that under HB1, if a police department receives a grant, hypothetically saying $10,000, then under HB1, the city must maintain that grant that additional $10,000 grant, even if it is a one and done grant, the city must continue to maintain that because that is considered an increase in the budget. So anytime there is an increase, then we must as a municipality, even if it is a one and done, must continue to maintain it. And in years, and we know we're in one right now, financial hardship, that could be an issue. This is not a, an assault on our police department, which we know we love dearly, but this is just protecting as a fail safe for ourselves and our budget. Thank you. Any other discussion on this item? Mr. Mayor. Commissioner Taylor. I want to preface what I'm saying with this, that I do not support the HB1. So I just want to make that clear. But my issues with it, um, the difference between our city and other municipalities is like Vice Mayor said, we, are, we have a unique situation. We are under state oversight. So we would then be suing the very entity who at this point does control our money. So my question to the man, um, to, through the mayor to the attorney, number one, is this just a ceremonial gesture for us to join in this suit? Will there be ramifications if we do not support this lawsuit? And if this lawsuit does pass or they win, will the city still benefit if we do not support? Madam Attorney. Uh, yes, through the mayor. Um, this is certainly just the choice of the commission. Um, there are no ramifications that I um, know of if you don't support it. Um, in terms of if you do support it, I, I don't have a crystal ball, so I don't know what the state will do or whether there will be any kind of um, actions against the city or anything like that. So 
Um, this is, you know, purely just something for you all to decide whether it is in the best interest of the city. I think it's been explained by the attorneys who brought it forward. There would not be a fee at all that the city would pay. This is being done by a um, public entity that is um, getting funds to, to do this litigation. So it's um, sort of a social justice kind of a cause and it's purely within the discretion of the city. To the mayor. So this is simply a ceremonial gesture. Well, I, I, I don't think it's anything in it. litigation is a ceremonial gesture. I think they're um, fighting to just like, you know, other social justice causes, they're fighting to have this issue um, looked at by a court to hopefully be overturned because they believe that it uh, takes away home rule authority from cities and it straps um, cities from being able to control their budgets. And so nothing about it is ceremonial. The only issue for the commission is, you know, whether it wants to go forward with uh, participation in the lawsuit or not, but there is no, um, you know, there is no cost to the city um, as has been explained already. And it's, it's just really whether you, whether, you know, as commissioners, you all think it's in the best interest of the city at this point. My only issue again is that we are suing the very entity whose thumb we are up under right now. And at the end of the day, I don't want our city to suffer based on actions that we take up here. Because at the end of the day, people are still human. So I just want us to caution ourselves, jumping on stuff that other cities have the infrastructure to, to handle when Opalaka is not in that position at this moment. So that's all I'm saying about this, resolu this resolution. And that's the reason why I pulled it. Mr. Mayor. Vice Mayor Williams. To the city attorney. Do you know if any other cities um, in this, I don't know, and I probably should have asked you earlier, um, could be within um, oversight and also joining this litigation? I do not know the answer to that question. Okay. And also through the mayor to the city attorney, what potentially, because I think the, what I'm hearing is um, a little, is the apprehension of what is backlash of what could happen. Um, it could backlash happen to our city if we support this. I, I would have no way of knowing that. Um, I would think that, you know, the people who monitor the city have to do things in a legal way and according to your contract for the oversight authority but i don't know you know whether there would be anybody doing anything retaliatory to the city because the city chooses or not to participate in litigation against the state to the mayor so at the end of the day, I believe we're all here for the people, um, all people of Opalaka. However, I like to long range plan. That's what I do. And I hope that's what we're doing. And I hope that we don't do or make decisions based on fear, but based on what the next generation will have to deal with. And that's why I am in support to make sure that the next generation that sits up on the dais does not have to eat this because of fear. Thank you. Any other discussion on this item? To the mayor. Commissioner Bass. Not so much a discussion. Um, to be honest with you, I'm on defense on this one because there are pros and cons um, on either end of it. I see the benefits and I'm, um, I know Vice Mayor just mentioned not to operate in fear, even though we're not supposed to have fear, but just really don't know the thoughts of other people. So with that being said, I am literally on the fence. I don't wanna make a move that would um, cause a backlash. 
And yes, we, we would hope that it doesn't happen, but let's, let's self-check, you know, it happens. And that's my fear of um, supporting it. Um, like I said, I see the pros and I see the cons. So I am literally on the fence. Thank you. All right. Mr. Mayor. Commissioner Taylor. Um, I guess my next question would be, have we, being that we are under state oversight and we are not in control of our money, have we considered the state oversight when we, we thought to bring forth this resolution? Do we discuss with them and see if this is something that the city can, can go forth with or in that, and it's not fear, it's just, well, I don't, I don't think if we don't have to, if we're still gonna benefit, then there's no need for us to join this lawsuit. So I'm, 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 I'm like my, my colleague said, a little on the fence. And I think we should get the opinion of the oversight board because they, again, control our pocketbook. So um, when we sit in a state oversight board, we have to understand that the attorney said the contract we currently have, um, the state doesn't control our money. Um, the state has an agreement that we gave to them to provide assistance and oversight over our financials. So there's three areas in that. Number one is to approve our budget. So what we do when we approve a budget, we send that up to the state. They provide their opinion, their feedback. They make recommendations and they send it um, back to us. Um, two, they approve and get our feedback for our five-year recovery plan. And then three, make sure we have the financial ordinances that are in place um, to make sure that we are doing what we need to do to align the decisions that we make in terms of our, how we handle our finance align with the approved budget and five-year recovery plan. Um, that is the extent of our financial oversight um, board, uh, which this right here, this HB1 is dealing with something different from that. Um, not only is it this legal challenges is focused on the separation of powers. Um, we are a home rule um, in a home rule county, and there's been battles for decades about the rule of municipalities and the county and the state. This is one of those challenges that we're going that we are um, fighting against to make sure that the residents and the people here have control and influence on our own finances. It is taxpayers who should have the decision and authority over their budget. What this law does is takes that and puts it in the hands of someone that does not live in this community. So what we wanna do is make it very clear and we wanna challenge the legal authority of the state in that regard. Um, if everyone does their job, um, these two things are separate. How it can influence though is during the legislative process. So there is a lot of opinions about that. Um, but when it comes to financial oversight, um, at this point in time, I have not heard anything to where this particular passage of this legislation um, can hinder them in approving our budgets, our five year recovery plan, or anything of that nature. So uh, that's the consideration that I know our person gave to supporting this legislation because we have a duty to protect our taxpayer dollars, and that is what this legislation is doing. Any other comments, questions? Madam Clerk, roll call. Commissioner Taylor. No. Vice Mayor Williams. Yes. Commissioner Bass. No. Mayor Pigott. Yes. Motion fails, 2-2. Two, two. All right, 14-1. A resolution of the City Commission of the City of Opelika, Florida, authorizing the city manager to piggyback the state of Florida contract with Toshiba America Business Solutions Inc. for qualified professional service to provide 
10 copier machines for use within the city, authorizing the city manager to enter into an agreement for same for an amount not to exceed $19,017 in a form acceptable to the city attorney, terminating all active contracts and leases with Toshiba America Solutions, providing for incorporation of recitals, providing for an effective date. This is sponsored by the city manager. Do you have a motion? Move it. Moved by Vice Mayor Williams. Second. Second by Commissioner Bass. Um, Mr. Manager, could you introduce this item? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I ask our IT director to come up to explain this in more detail. Uh, good evening, Mayor Commission. Nelson Rodriguez, Department of Information Technology. Um, what we have before us is a resolution to kind of take care of a billing issue that happened on the Toshiba side um, post an adoption of resolution 189557 on October 10th, 2018. The way the state of Florida contract uh, for Toshiba works is that each machine has a, a monthly lease payment and then you pay a cost per copy. There's a cost for color copies and a cost for uh, black and white copies. When this resolution was passed and we entered into agreement, upon the first or second invoice that was received, we um, noticed that the lease portion was not on the invoice, on any of the 10 invoices. We reached out to Toshiba, we talked to their contract managers, they said, everything's fine, the billing is correct. Okay. Uh, again, that error was picked up by finance and they said, Nelson, there's a problem here. We reached out again, this has been done in writing, uh, voice, uh, and again, they said, Nelson, there's no issue, everything is fine. Uh, a few months ago, Ms. Ms. Uh, Lazier brought this to my attention, same issue, we reached out, they said, everything's fine. Well, uh, approximately about 30 or 45 days ago, Toshiba reached out and they said, yes, we made a mistake. Um, we did, have not billed you for three years for the lease portion. We said, hey, here are our emails and you have said everything is okay, that the billing is fine. So they said, okay, well, we're gonna figure some type of resolution. Um, there was some concern because the amount does add up to about $75,000 in unbilled lease payments over those three years. Um, so the resolution that we came up with, uh, with Toshiba, was that they will wipe the 75000 They will not charge the city for that if we go ahead and terminate the current lease and renew leases on the 10 machines using the current state of Florida contract. The benefit to that is that the rates have gone down with the new contracts. So there will be a savings on the lease payment and on the cost per copy. And again, we'll have brand new equipment uh, replacing what's in there now. So um, to sum up, this would be um, about $75,000 that the city would have to come up with and pay on these unbilled invoices, or we can go ahead and um, move forward, wipe that out and start fresh under the new state of Florida contract. All right, floor is open for discussion. Discussion on this item. Madam Clerk, roll call. Vice Mayor Williams? Yes. Commissioner Bass? Yes. Commissioner Taylor? Yes. Mayor Pygate? Yes. Motion passes 4 0. Resolution 14 2. A resolution of the City Commission of the City of Opelika, Florida, authorizing the City Manager to negotiate and execute an agreement with City National Bank of Florida to provide professional banking services to the City of Opelika for the opening of an interest bearing checking account to deposit the allocation of coronavirus state and local fiscal recovery funds established under the American Rescue Plan Act, ARPA, providing for incorporation of recitals, providing for an effective date. This is sponsored by the city manager. Do I have a motion? Move it. Move by Commission Taylor. Second. Second by Vice Mayor Williams. Madam Clerk, I mean, in discussion on this item, Mr. Manager, could you? Paul, I mean, introduce this item. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. <laughs> <laughs> um, as for any uh, banking activity, um, per, per our charter and our rules, uh, any account to be open has to be approved by the city commission. Um, as specifically briefed previously, um, any um, account, specifically an interest bearing account, um, has to come before the commission for approval. And per opera funding rules, uh, any interest gained 
uh, any monies uh, from ARPA uh, that goes into this interest bearing, bearing account, interest is not counted uh, as part of ARPA funds and can be reallocated for other uses. So this is to actually uh, open up this account so the monies can be transferred from where they're being held at currently um, into this account and any, for, and, and any future ARPA funds as they come in, which the next allotment is not uh, scheduled to come in until next year, is placed in that same interest bearing account and those funds are appropriately utilized. Any discussion on this item? Madam Clerk, roll call. Mr. Mayor? Yeah. Um, may, I, may I say something with regards to this item? Yes. If you look at the last, the second last page in the add-on packet on the back side of the page, towards the top, um, it has my name and it says, I am manager designated to act on behalf of the city of Opelika. I'm an alternate signature, and I believe that this should be Mr. Pate's name. On that, um, I should be a secondary signature. Okay. Mr. Uh, Mayor? Mr. Magic, could you explain that? Yes. Uh, based on just getting the information from Ms. Lazier, we'll get that changed. Uh, that will request require a, a um, amendment uh, to this agreement. Um, through the bank. Uh, so this is my item. Uh, so I will say a friendly amendment to change that terminology and the, the document won't be executed until that's appropriately corrected. That's a, a mistyping of the bank, uh, Ms. Flores. My apologies. All right, so Mr. Manager, you have done a friendly amendment to remove uh, Joanna Flores on- um, And add my name, Mr. Mayor. One of two of the entity authorization and replace it with uh, your name, John Pate. Yes, Mr. Mayor. All right, is that acceptable, um, Madam Clerk? Ready for the roll call? Yes, all right, roll call. Commissioner Baz? Yes. Commissioner Taylor? Yes. Vice Mayor Williams? Yes. Mayor Pigott? Yes. Motion passes 4-0. 16-A-1. An ordinance of the City Commission of the City of Opelika, Florida, amending the annual adopted general proprietary and special revenue funds budgets for the fiscal year commencing October 1st, 2020 and ending September 30th, 2021, adjusting revenues and expenditures as reflected in Exhibit A, providing for the expenditure of funds established by the budget, authorizing the city manager to take certain actions, providing for appropriation of all budgets and expenditures, providing for fees consistent with appropriations and amendment, providing for incorporation of recitals, providing for conflict and repealer, providing for severability, providing for an effective date. This is sponsored by the city manager. Do I have a motion? Move it. Oh, it is public hearing. Public hearing is open for 16A1. My name is Dottie Johnson. I reside at 13724 Northwest 22nd Place. I want to go on record because I couldn't find it in the uh, change of uh, the amendment. And I was told by the commission when I previously asked had you all made a decision to reduce to police officers, I was told publicly that was not done. Now, I need someone before y'all pass this or I know the appropriate way to get an answer. When did it happen and what page can I find it on? And again, when it comes down to taxpayers' monies and the previous administration is always passed by ordinance. And I noticed that a lot of your things are passed by resolution. Um, three minutes, you don't have much to say with everything that's on the agenda. But I am standing up tonight to know, since everybody last meeting loved the police department, I was a former police cadet with the city of Miami, so I truly love, I come from a law enforcement family. So I really want to know what page I can find it on before y'all pass it. Thank you. Public hearing is open. 
Public hearing is closed. Do you have a motion? Move it. Moved by Vice Mayor Williams. Second by Commissioner Teller, Mr. Manager. Uh, Mr. Mayor, uh, just for clarification, Mr. Mayor, just for clarification, this is the budget amendment four, I believe Ms. what Ms. Johnson is speaking of is the uh, new, newly adopted budget where two police officers were reduced. I just want to just make that clarification before I bring Mr. Anathan up to speak. Mr. Anathan. Um, you say in the new budget, we so, reduce the number of officers by two? So Ms. Ms. The resident came up and made a uh, question in regards to where two police officers were reduced in the budget. The only rem remembrance of officers or anything being reduced as far as personnel was the adoption of the new budget. This is a budget. This is budget amendment number four that we're dis discussing now. So I just wanted to clarify that before I brought Mr. Anthony up to speak. Okay. So just to be clear, um, because we. Did we increase our officers with the passage of the budget or did we decrease the number of officers with the passage of the budget? Mr. Ant, I have Mr. Anthony. Good evening, Mayor, Commissioners. Uh, for clarification, the budget that was presented to you uh, had 49 sworn officers. On the 29th, a decision was made to reduce that by two and put two additional people into public works primarily uh, for uh, for working with the illegal dumping and so forth. Okay, so, so let's be yeah. clear. With our uh, 2021 budget, how many police officers did we budget for? Uh, in the FY, in the current budget, uh, let me qualify my terms. For the year that's just being completed right now, it was 45. 45. Yes, sir. And so with the 2020, 2021 to 2022, we have how many police officers? It's, it was uh, went up to 47. The original proposal was 49 as a settlement. Even on the 29th, the decision was made to scale it back to 47. Okay, so let it be clear that we passed a budget to increase the number of officers by two and also to increase our public works by two. That is what we did. Yes, there was a proposal to have four officers, but we were clear in making sure that we increase both public works and also our officers. Um, so I wanna make sure that is very clear um, and not this narrative that we were reducing our police force. Um, we increased our police force by two sworn officers and how many non-sworn? I'm sorry, say again. And know. how many non sworn officers? Oh, non, non sworn went up from eight to 11. From eight to 11. Yeah. So there was an overall increase of five people in our police department um, with this passage of his new budget. And we also increased public works by two so that they can start to clean up this city. Thank you. Sir. You may proceed. Very quickly. Uh, we can, uh, I just want you to know brevity is going to be the order of the day tonight, or I should say the order of the day to, uh, tonight. Uh, it's a very brief presentation in your package. Uh, well, by way of background, next page, please. Just a reminder, what we do at year end is we look at anything that might have gotten through the budget and make adjustments where appropriate. Uh, the, as you can see on the presentation page, the information that I was working on is through October 9th. Uh, there continues to be further additions to the FY21 accounts. So uh, tomorrow I start all over again. So when you see the second hearing on the 10th of November, uh, these numbers will have changed somewhat based on new, new information that's been put in the account since October 9th. Okay, next page, please. So I said brevity is the objective for this evening. Uh, your package includes 32 budget items. The number says 33, but I didn't use one of them, so it's 32. Most of them were minor housekeeping, some are more significant. I'm going to take you through very quickly the major activities within the general fund, major changes, and also major changes in the water sewer fund. What we have here is the general fund, as you can see, 
the first thing I did was bring in revenue that was way above what we budgeted. Just to reset uh, your memories, when we put the budget together last year, we were just beginning to enter into the pandemic uh, era. We really didn't know what activities were uh, going to be uh, cut back because of the pandemic. Consequently, our permit revenue was a very, very low number. And the good news, as I've said a couple of times, I'll say it again tonight, the permit revenue just blew through everything. It's one of the highest numbers I think you've experienced in a long time. So long story short, I brought in $1.6 million of revenue. Uh, the first thing that does is increase the contingency. And then after that, we just started to use a contingency for various activities. Police competition is a very big number, and I'm going to go through that in a lot of detail. Uh, there's some very interesting things that go on there. Uh, the, we had in the budget a $205,000 budget for employees who were going to leave the city. And when they left, they had a crude leave, and they were able to cash that out. Uh, it turned out the accounts decided that for this year, FY21, it would be more prudent to show those cash outs within each department's compensation. So we didn't use that a particular account, so we liquidated to make funds available for something else. You'll see 100,000 of that uh, departing employee payout in the police uh, budget on the next page. The next thing we did was the, as you know uh, quite well, finance department has been understaffed from the get-go. Uh, finally acknowledged the fact that those Positions, in fact, were going to be open, brought in the savings for that. The other three things we did is uh, there was some additional money, expenses related to the CARES Act, brought that in. City attorney budget uh, really was looks like it's going to be underspent this year from the moment I brought in 200000 If, as I said, I've got to go back and I will look at additional entries into the accounts after October 9th. If I've overshot the runway, then I'll restore it and, and get some reduction somewhere else. And then the other is just kind of the balancing number. So long story short, the what you can see in the lower right-hand corner is the contingency number. At this point in the budget, is essentially $2.5 million. Uh, to the extent that's not used, and at the moment I don't think much of it will be used, uh, it's going to fall right into fund balance. So it's, I think it's going to be another very good year for fund balance. Just to, this is first look at it. Next page, please. This is police compensation. Uh, the police compensation is a very involved thing. When I put the budget together 15 months ago, I truly didn't realize how, it was, how involved it was. Uh, the finance department did some excellent work in working with ADP, and they have really identified a lot of things that are at play in there. And I'll take you through them very quickly. Uh, the first thing, well, uh, you can see in Wages before you even look at benefits and so forth, $411,000 increase. The first thing that shows up in there is that there's $137,000 of overtime that gets presented as, as is reported as straight time. And that we kind of knew about that one, but this is the first time we're really able to quantify it. And that will be corrected next year. Just if I can digress for a second, you can see that the two numbers that highlight are your two overtime numbers added together. There's about 300 plus thousand dollars of overtime last year. Good news, a lot of that was covered by the CARES, uh, the County CARES Act. So it was a lot of overtime. It was done for reasons, but it is a big number. The second thing is that within, uh, for all PBA members, for any holiday, they essentially get an extra day of pay. And it's been built into the budget for FY 2122. I put it 140, it turns out it's 150,000. So uh, a little bit exposed, but we have enough vacancies in the police department right now that that's gonna balance out without being a problem. The other, th one other thing about the PBA contract is that the PBA members, if they accrue more than 480 hours of sick time in any given year, they can sell it at the end of the year. And so you see there another number of, another $43,000. Uh, the, uh, the next one is the one I referred to before, as I said, we did have a budget of $205,000 for employees who are leaving the city and cashing out their leave. Uh, as I said, the accounts that decided for this year is going to be in the compensation. So you can see 100,000 of it came back. So 
that, those are the primary things that cause that uh, number to be so much bigger than what we budgeted. But the work that was done with ADP really has identified that stuff so that going forward, we're really on top of the dynamics in this budget. Next page, please. This is the last page. What I've done here is the identified two items and then a offset form. First item has to do with the wastewater processing that we pay to the county each month. That charge is typically in the range of $250,000 to $300,000. Uh, in the month of July, we got charged over $500,000 for it, which really created a problem for the budget. I mean, I've compensated for it, but that's the primary reason for the overspend. Working with the county to better understand what's going on, still haven't gotten a clean answer. So it's still a work in progress, but I've budgeted for it. The second thing is, and this is strictly my being conservative, the, there will continue to be legal expense associated with the billing issues. Uh, the, what I've seen so far does not get you to 400,000 but I did put another $125,000 in. Again, putting it in the budget amendment only allows us to, if we have to cover that expense, it's already covered. If it's not, if we don't need it, it goes into fund balance. And then the offset was uh, 150 some thousand dollars of saving, 116 was contingency, and the rest were other savings we found. That's really the key drivers on budget amendments so far, budget amendment before that is. As I said, I'm coming back. Uh, I get to start all over again tomorrow with updated numbers, and I'll see you again on November 10th with a updated version of this. Are there any questions in what in your package or what I might have covered this evening? Does that conclude your presentation? Yes, sir. As I said, brevity is the order of the night. All right. Any questions or comments on the budget? Uh, Mr. Mayor, I do have one question. Commissioner Taylor. To Mr. Anderson, being that the commission passed to remove two officers and put two in public works, this budget amendment is just for the police compensation. Will there be an additional one for public works? No, sir. Again, the point was the taking out of two police officers and increasing uh, two public works employees is for FY22. This is only FY21, so you won't. Oh, so just. Yeah, okay. this is everything that occurs up to okay, 30 September. Next OK, yes, sir. Done. All right, gotcha. Thank you, Mr. Anna. Yes, sir. Mr. Mayor. Vice Mayor Williams. So I was a little concerned about the dialogue that happened before um, the before the discussion. Mr. Anathan, can you please let me know, are we reducing or increasing our police have we reduced or have we increased i do remember the discussion we went from four to two in order to place into um two into public works and one additional question i noticed that there is um overtime that seems to increase will the decrease will the decrease increase the overtime let me answer that two different ways if i may uh the fy 21 budget which we're looking at right now trying to get rid of all the things that housekeeping we have to do had a budget of 45 sworn officers and i will tell you at the moment they are with vacancies they're well under that number the approved budget for fy 22 increases by two over what was in the budget. And as the mayor pointed out, also three non-sworn, which went from eight to 11. The overtime, uh, to a certain extent, you try and manage it. Yes, when you have vacancies and you've got to make sure the city is covered, the overtime is going to go up. There's no, no question about it. But again, that's for next year. This, these numbers are pretty well baked in, certainly in the compensation. They will not change. It's a lot of the operating expense that will, has been changing over the last week or two. Are you, are you 
You got a vice mayor? Yeah. All right. Um, a few weeks ago, when we were talking about the budget. Uh, one of the things that uh, we discussed quite a bit was about the pay increases um, for select employees. Um, and we discussed in finding 52 from our operational audit that um, they found that we had made increases that was not in alignment with our city pay plan. And um, in that discussion, um, it was told that this budget amendment um, was the budget amendment that would authorize um, those pay increases. Um, could you um, explain our process for um, these pay increases that we see within um, this budget and how they have um, are in alignment with our operational audit uh, recommendations? Mayor, I think they're two different things. Uh, for example, a department may have a pay increase in a certain employee. And again, we've discussed the reasons why, and I go back through if you want, if you want me to. But if in the same department, if there's a vacancy, which creates savings in compensation, that's never going to be a budget amendment because it, the budget is X dollars. It may turn out that some people are higher, some people are lower. So. Uh, this reflects all pay increases that were brought in. It does not necessarily mean that you would see it in any particular line item. You will see within the 32 different things there, you will see some adjustments for departments that may or may not be related to an employee who uh, got a increase after the budget was put in place last year. But uh, again, if the budget would, if the total budget for compensation for a particular department doesn't change, even if one employee went up and there was a vacancy offset, you're not going to see that. Uh, uh, okay, maybe I, I wasn't may... clear about I'm, I'm sorry. Uh, questioning. So um, there were, in looking at this budget, there are a couple of areas where there are increases in um, executives and um, a few in regular, and we brought a concern um, about what we've seen in the past where um, executives were provided these funds and our regular line of employees are not um, given the raises that they also deserve. And in our pay plan, um, right now, I am unaware of where we are with our pay plan. Um, and with that, we have an operational finding about these pay increases. And there are quite a few pay increases in this budget. Um, and I want to make sure that um, we're clear about what these are for um, and why. So I'm asking about why um, there were these increases and um, do they align with what has been recommended based upon our operational audit findings? Yes, sir, if I may, uh, just to go back over what some of the things we talked about before, you had three department heads who had been, had their pay reduced and they were restored. Uh, going forward for next year, you have two employees who picked up additional responsibilities and they have, their budget reflects that. Again, the FY22 budget reflects that. Most of the increases that I did share with you before were related to the PBA contract. So that really, in a nutshell, is the majority of any pay increases we might've talked about. Mr. Mayor. Mr. Manager. Based on commission directive, we have an upcoming workshop that is supposed to go through those specific breakdowns as requested during the last budget meeting when the budget was approved, you guys requested a workshop to go over that specifically. And I believe the clerk put out that workshop date today. Yes, sir, it's the 17th, 17th of November. Um, with that, I am unable to support this um, at the moment until we get more clarity um, on the details of um, these uh, pay increases and other payments. I wanna make sure um, that we are very clear on these increases. Um, the budget is where a lot of, um, was li literally our plan and we are under financial oversight. And I wanna be very clear 
about these um, increases and we will be proper stewards of our taxpayer dollars. So at the moment, I am uncomfortable until we have this workshop that breaks this down with moving this um, budget amendment forward. Any other discussion on this item? Mr. Mayor, oh, the budget Mr. year, Manager? just for clarification, the budget year is already ended. We're in a new budget year right now. This budget amendment applies to last budget year. The budget sure. year is already ended. So the, the and budget I, amendment four, then we'll, like that, please go ahead and stand. Uh, uh, this Mr. process Mayor. that we do here and we do, uh, as required, I think the state requires it. I think it's always been done here. This thing needs to be signed, sealed, and delivered by November 30th. Otherwise, the state is going to find us not in compliance with managing our budget. It tends not to back you into a corner, but I, if you wait until the workshop on the 17th of November, uh, we, we might end up with two commission meetings around Thanksgiving, which is going to be tough these concerns were brought up in almost all of our budget workshops that we had um, in the past. And it was told that we had that during this budget amendment is when we would have that discussion. So we're here at this discussion and now I'm told that um, it's a workshop. So um, I have a right and we can make amendments to this budget. I know that some of these things have is just after um, these have been expended, um, but Literally, it is our duty as elected officials to review this and make sure that what is uh, passed by management and the departments um, come to us and we review it and we decide and we have that final say and decision on yes, whether sir. or not this is um, uh, appropriate and this is in the best interest of our, our citizens and our taxpayers. And at this mm -hmm. moment, um, based upon the questions that I, I have, um, at this point in time, I cannot support this item. If I may, Thank you. there are only three uh, department heads who have increases that are reflected in the FY21 budget. So we're talking about three directors. I am looking at line item two. It says uh, the salaries for the executive city manager office has increased for 5,500. Uh, we also have increases in salaries for the regular employees by 6,000. Um, in HR, we have uh, executive and regular increases. And uh, the what else? Pol police department, we have over 200,000 um, in increases there. Um, in buildings and licensing, I see an increase. In public works, I see an increase. In Build public works building and maintenance increase. Am, am I looking at something different than? Yes, sir. If I parks can... and recreation, I see uh, increases. Like, yes, sir. Again, that goes back to what I said before, that we set up a two hundred thousand dollar budget for people who are leaving. In parks and rec, for example, we had a hundred thousand dollars of payouts to two senior employees who left. Building the license you had some senior people leave. So yes, there may be some small increases in there, but when we talk about parks and recreation, for example, you're talking $100,000 of payout to two very long time employees. So it, there's a lot of things going on. You mentioned police. Police is, again, it's a function of all the things that I took you through tonight. It's not because they're a raise. I mean, we built into the budget the increases that are consistent with the PBA uh, contract. So any increase that you're looking at is attributable to the things we looked at tonight, not because people got increases uh, related to uh, just front increases. Uh, your executive pay, uh, I think actually went down within the police department, if I remember right. But again, there you have amongst other things, $100,000 of uh, officers leaving and getting uh, the charges showing up in compensation rather than that account that I pointed out uh, early this evening. Any other discussion on this item? May I? Mr. Mr. Mayor. Um, I'll get, um, Mr. Manager. Vice so Mayor. just, uh, <clears throat> I, I, thank you, Ms. Madam Vice Mayor, you're signaling, I wasn't speaking loud enough. These are expenditures that have already occurred. Number one, the budget year closed out at the end of September. 
October 1 was a new budget year. We're working out at closing out the budget year. The commission's directive was there to be no movement in regards to any executive increases for the upcoming budget year until a workshop is held to go over all compensation, executive, line level, and otherwise, which is scheduled for the 17th. Right now, what we're looking at is truing up the budget as we do every year until we get to the final budget amendment to balance out the budget on all levels. So the way Mr. Anthon is explaining it is correct. Um, and as far as any position movements, as far as any raises, as far as anything, anything goes, we've had multiple budget amendments throughout the year in, in which those things, I believe, if Ms. Anthony can correct me, those, those breakdowns were done. Uh, it may have not been done by the eaches, like each individual employee's name, but it was done by section, by department, and where those adjustments were being made. Am I incorrect, Mr. Anathan? The budget is driven off a employee by employee compensation. So when it starts to stray, but you have to remember, we did not get compensate. We did not get accounting reports for compensation until a couple months ago. So it was not appropriate to respond until just made sure that whatever I was doing had some consistency with what was being reported. Vice Mayor? Yes, I would like to make a motion to move the item. Any other discussion on this item? Madam Clerk, roll call. Sorry, yes. Commissioner Taylor? Yes. Vice Mayor Williams? Yes. Commissioner Bass? Yes. Mayor Pygott? No. Motion passes, first reading, 3-1. Mr. Manager, your report. Thank you. <clears throat> Good afternoon, um, Mr. Mayor, Madam Vice Mayor, Commissioners, staff, and uh, guests. Um, I am uh, pleased to announce that the uh, department directors uh, conducted a citywide tour of the majority of the city of Opelaka. As a result of the tour, we've begun to prioritize various areas of the city to address some of the challenges we face as a city. It's different when we speak about the challenges uh, as we sit here on the dais and hear residents come up uh, every two weeks, but it's different when we take the entire staff out on our bus and actually drive each area of the city to see the issues for ourselves. Uh, so we have been able to um, get eyes on uh, a lot of those issues that we hear about on a quite often basis uh, on this dais, uh, as well as uh, inquiries that come through my office and other offices of the city. Um, so that turned out to be a very uh, well needed field trip and I think a field trip that we would do more often. Staff participated in a mandatory public records training to become more efficient and respond to public records requests. Uh, the city commission authorized me to review the city's fleet inventory for police and public works departments to dispose of all vehicles, old unused equipment, and miscellaneous scrap metal. As a result of the auction, the city received $100,803.75, which will be presented to the city commission at the next commission meeting. Ingram Park field lighting is 95% complete as we're currently waiting on FPL to activate power. In addition, Ingram Park restrooms and wolf rehabilitation is now completed. I have met with residents regarding their concerns as well as their feedback on what they would like to see for the city. I am working on feasibility studies on various departments. We have thankfully completed a painless task of going through our Office 365 migration I want to thank our IT director uh, for his assistance and being available at all times of day and night, as well as his staff and assisting the uh, staff in migrating to our Office 365 setup. And we look forward to using more tools in regards to our IT infrastructure moving forward. The city has been notified that the grant application for $7 million for the dredging of the 127th Street Canal has been approved for further consideration and will be further evaluated by the State of Florida Department of Economic Opportunity 
at a review schedule for Monday, November 1st. I look forward to getting more input from our residents um, on an individual basis. Um, as I, residents reach out to myself and various department heads directly, as well as receiving input from our residents during Citizens Forum and other engagements that I see our residents at on a daily basis. Um, I think it's very important to hear from our residents and really what they want to see in their city and prioritize it in a way where they see their budget dollars at work. Um, at the end of the day, we are one team, and that's Team Opelaka. Um, as I came here, my the two year anniversary, two year anniversary is October fifteenth, um, and when I came here, you know, I thought it was very important that we uh, maintained a team concept, and understand that we're one team, and what one member of the team goes through, we all go through. So um, I tell my staff, I tell our residents. I tell anybody watching um, to keep us on the lookout and uh, we're making a lot of progress. Um, as far as the city commission is concerned, um, the feasibility study on the new police department has been completed. It will be presented to uh, the city commission, hopefully sometime in the month of November where the city commission and our residents can assist us uh, based on our engineer study of picking the location uh, of where our new Opelika Police Department will be so we can expend the at least the initial $1.2 million of funds that we received um, from the state of Florida. That concludes my report this time. I'll take any questions. Any questions for the manager? All right, hearing none, moving on to official board reports. Um, Madam Clark, do we have any board reports? No, Mr. Mayor. Okay. Do we have any future agenda items? All right. Um, any reports from the Mayor Commission? Vice Mayor Mr. Williams? Mr. Mayor, um, first I want to, before I talk about anything else, just give um, um, Piggyback, that's a, a word, um, behind um, Ms. Russell giving shout out to Commissioner Taylor for Conga Loka. Um, I had a great time. It was really um, a good turnout, um, very well planned with all the different various departments. And um, just want to make sure I just, you know, let you know that it was really spectacular. Um, and I hope um, next year to get a shirt. So <laughs> exactly, yeah, that part, right? Mm -hmm. Still waiting on a shirt. There's a shade. <laughs> um, also, I will be remiss. Um, thank you to my sorors for Delta Days in the great city of Opelika, and to the commission and to the staff and everyone that assisted with um, with making it happen. Um, also want to make sure I just say that this Sunday Parks and Recreation has a, a haunted house uh, scaroween event. Jalen will be there. Black Panther will be there. Um, and um, last but not least, I would like to thank Vice Chairman Oliver Gilbert for this uh, past Saturday's cleanup. We had a great time. Um, luckily, we didn't have to clean too much because the area was still relatively clean that we um, cleaned before, but it did allow us to, to see um, the property that we had been talking about on um, Alabama and actually um, internalize the blight um, that um, the, the particular property that we will be discussing soon, um, you know, is, is in, in need of TLC. But um, thank you to the commissioners that came and that was there in spirit. Um, and again, thank you, Vice Chairman um, Oliver Gilbert. Thank you. Anyone else? Um, um, Commissioner Bass? Yes, thank you. 
Um, like Vice Mayor said, it was a job well done, Commissioner Taylor. Well done. And yes, I'm waiting for my t-shirt. Thank you very much. Um, on Saturday coming, I will be hosting a violence prevention summit here uh, at City Hall. I'm sorry, Shabundi starts at 10 o'clock in the morning. And we will also be giving high school students or middle, high, middle school students 50 community service hours to help them get what's needed for graduation. Because we know um, during this pandemic, they haven't been always able to go out and get those hours. So they have an opportunity to get 50 hours for attending this summit. And if you look at the flyer, we have, I mean, it's just unbelievable the lineup that we have. Our keynote speakers coming from Chicago, Leonard and our moderator is from Hot 105. So there you go, it's gonna be great. I'm looking to seeing you all here. Thank you so much. And it was a pleasure cleaning up with you. <laughs> Mr. Mayor. Commissioner Taylor. Well, two things, one, I would be remiss if I took all of the credit for Conga Loca, I got to give a shout out to the clerk's office, Chris, Randy, and Ms. Joanna that worked with me to put this together to the best, de they're, they're one of the best departments, but to the best department, Parks and Rec, to our police department and our um, public works that came together to make sure that it was a success. Um, I wasn't there for the cleanup, um, Vice Mayor, but I heard that it was a great event. So I wanna commend you on the job well done. And I also wanna piggyback on what everybody else said. Um, welcome to our new chief, Chief um, Jackson. We welcome you to the great city of Opalaka and we expect great things from you. I'm done, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Thank you. I wanna thank each and every one of you for being here today and for serving the city of Opalaka. I uh, want to give again uh, piggyback on the kudos to uh, Commissioner Teller for an amazing Congo local event uh, on the first annual heritage celebration of Hispanic heritage in our city um, and also inaugurating Delta Days here, uh, Vice Mayor, um, and working with our um, County Commissioner, Vice Chair of the County Commissioner, Oliver Gibber, to do the third uh, community cleanup that we have in here in the community. Um, these type of events, including what Commissioner Bass is doing um, this Saturday, it really brings our community together and give us an opportunity um, to engage each other, to build that village that we need in order to move this community forward. Uh, we look forward to our new chief, uh, Jackson, coming in here and making sure that our community stays safe um, and deal with whatever we got going on um, and move this uh, city forward. So we really thank you and appreciate you for taking coming out of retirement to serve here in the city of Opelika. So um, with that, is there any um, other comments? Mr. Moving Mayor, on, um, just Vice wanted Mayor. to say his wife is also a Delta. <laughs> All right, any official board appointments? No, Mr. Mayor. All right, do we have a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. Moved by Commissioner Teller. Second. Second by Vice Mayor Williams. Everyone have a good evening. Take care. This meeting is adjourned.